We are now in the fourth section of the exhibition, and as we were saying earlier, there was uh, one of the impacts of the Second World War on Egypt in particular was the influx of Commonwealth soldiers to the country. So by 1941, there were around 140,000 soldiers stationed just around the Cairo area. And you can imagine all these soldiers in the city wanting to go out to be entertained the movies become a little bit boring after a certain while, so the bars get very busy. And one of the negative impacts of this is the thriving of prostitution. So a lot of women, due to a lot of poverty, were being driven into prostitution. And um, the image of the broken prostitute is one of the central themes that come out in a lot of the works of the artists from that time. In, the, in a lot of the writings as well, they speak about the suffering of women, they speak about the importance of equality between men and women. And what's fascinating is that in the group itself, women were not only um, muses, they were not only considered as these kind of patrons that opened a salon and people came and sat there and spoke. It was not only a platform for the male artists. The female artists were equally integrated, younger, older. They were working alongside their male counterparts. They were, some of them were obviously also very um, prominent writers and authors, poets. Uh, some of them were patrons. So the presence of women in the group was very, very important. And the depiction of the women is not really through the objectifying male gaze, it was again using that fragmentation of the body to show the suffering of the prostitute and to raise awareness about that very, very important social issue that the group was really adopting and wanting to talk about and bring some sort of change with. What is really fascinating when you look at the engagement of uh, great figures in the group, uh, great female figures, uh, whether as artists or as patrons, is to see the general context. Uh, you know, this is in the late 30s and the early 1940s, and this is a time where Europe was, of course, plagued by the war. But in many societies, women didn't even have the right to vote, whether it's in France or in uh, most of the southern European countries. So for a group of artists and surrealist artists on top of it to take quite a feminist stance is actually quite radical and quite revolutionary. You know, in, the, in their French counterparts, uh, women didn't really play a role and were often disregarded as even being capable of creating interesting and substantial art in societies. So I think the way... Um, we could call them perhaps feminists, but I think it comes from a strong belief that actually suffering or inequalities are human rights. So for them, the suffering of a woman in this particular case was maybe um, a case of social injustice more than anything else. And that probably by our definition nowadays would actually maybe make them feminists, I think, in our terminology.